So we've seen how to calculate the proper time delta tau along a particular world line. We imagine that world line of consisting of a bunch of very small line segments, and those uh, line segments, when you zoom in enough, will have constant velocity. And so then the time experienced along each of those little segments is a space-time interval because it's inertial, it's moving at constant velocity. So we add up all the space-time intervals along all these little steps and we get the total proper time along this world line. We can evaluate delta s using the metric equation and if we start with the metric equation and we do a little bit of algebra on it, it turns into this and then this is um, a definite integral in calculus that means this, add up all of these little space-time intervals to get the total proper time. Now, in the special case where the speed v is constant, this formula has a much simpler form. So um, if the speed, uh, speed v is constant, Then we have this, delta tau AB is 1 minus V squared delta T AB. So this is an important formula that we'll use a lot. It deserves a box. And remember that this is only true if the speed is constant. So this is the speed, not the velocity. It's possible. Uh, you could use this formula for a clock that's, say, moving in a circle at a constant speed. The velocity is different because the direction is changing. But um, as long as the speed is constant, v squared will be constant, and then this formula applies. So let me say a little bit more about what this formula is telling us and how to use it. And then in the next video, we'll work through an example. So the first thing. Um, to highlight is that these quantities, yeah, they're both times, they're both t's just in different alphabets, but they're conceptually very different things. So delta tau and delta t are conceptually different, very different. So delta t is the time measured in a particular reference frame between a and b, whereas delta tau, the proper time, or a proper time, is the time um, measured by a clock that goes on this journey along this world line. So we wouldn't expect them to um, uh, have the same value. And to go back to the path length analogy, we have two different types of length here. So we have the length of the path, that's a delta L, and then maybe we also have delta Y. And there'd be no reason to expect in general that a path and its Y coordinate, like north, would, would have the same value. So just as a reminder, this is like delta L and delta y. Yeah, they're both lengths, but they're very different things. The second uh, comment I want to make is a reminder here that this and this um, always refers to time intervals between the same events. So delta tau a b and delta t, a, b, are time intervals between the same events. Okay. And lastly, and perhaps most, most interestingly, this equation here
tells us that the proper time between two events is always smaller than the coordinate time. So proper time is always smaller than the coordinate time. So here's a way to see that. Um, the quantity 1 minus v squared. We're using special relativity units. So v is never greater than 1. 1 is the speed of light. Um, so speeds are always less than the speed of light. And so this is 1 minus something less than 1. Square root, again, this is a number less than 1. So we're going to have delta t multiplied by a number less than 1, between 0 and 1, and that's going to make delta tau smaller. I could write that um, in math as well as in words. Delta tau ab, delta t ab. And let's compare that result to what would be going on uh, here, back in space, not space-time. So here, the path length, delta L, is always greater than or equal to um, a coordinate separation. There's no way that a curved path from A to B is shorter than this straight line path. So in um, in space, it's the other way around, that delta L AB is always greater uh, than or equal to delta Y AB. So this is weird, um, but it's a reminder that space-time intervals and time interval, proper time intervals in general, can't be read directly off of space-time diagrams. So again, the proper time is always smaller than the coordinate time between two events.